Well, I'm glad to be home and to find the people in such good heart uh, and the country in such fine shape uh, with the reports of record production in practically all important branches of industry. I have attended conferences which are of importance to New Zealand's welfare and to that of the world. I have met men and women who are leaders in political thought in their own countries and internationally and have benefited uh, by the privilege of discussing world questions with them. Everywhere I have gone, I have found New Zealanders in important positions and held in the highest esteem. I have found on all hands that New Zealand is appreciated very highly because of its leadership in social progress and in democratic principles nationally and internationally. I hope that the year 1949 will be a happy and prosperous one for you all and for our beloved country. The Atlantis arrives at Wellington and a charter to the New Zealand government. Refitted in England and her accommodation increased to provide for a large passenger lift, she has 900 people aboard. 750 of them are government-assisted immigrants, and the remainder are sponsored by the government. Hospitals, factories and domestic work have the largest quotas of women, and the biggest numbers of men go to coal mining, labouring, forestry and timber working although 73 different occupations are represented. A welcome addition to the ranks of New Zealand's essential workers, these new settlers will play an important part in the future economic life of the Dominion. This mock trial in New Plymouth is part of a carnival organised to raise funds for the upkeep of Pukikura Park. Armed with water pistol and truncheon, two intrepid members of the police force are bringing in a dangerous criminal. The prisoner may be a killer, but he's no match for these boys. With police like this, New Plymouth citizens can sleep soundly at night. The men, that is. The scales of justice seem a bit rusty. It must be that Taranaki air. Good heavens, the wrong man again. Money, all you men think of is money. Even the mayor can't escape the long arm of the Lord, and obviously he's impressed by the dignity of its proceedings. At Pukikota Park itself, there's a procession and sports meeting, and everyone seems to be taking part, even the little men who live at the bottom of the gardens. There's a competition amongst the children for the best decorated vehicle. Uh-uh, it's that mountain again. The result was a foregone conclusion. Funny how parents stick by their children when there's a merry-go-round in sight. There's no doubt, though, that it's a constant source of joy for kids of all ages. This display by marching girls is a fitting conclusion to a grand day. Keep your eyes on the track, boys. They'll still be there when your race is over. All participating in the carnival have the satisfaction of contributing to the upkeep of one of New Zealand's best-known reserves. Pukikura Park has gradually been developed from swamps and scrub-covered hills, but grants from official sources are not sufficient for this work. Periodically, appeals are made to the public, and New Plymouth citizens always give them their fullest support. The starters in the Wellington Cup for 1949 are parading in the birdcage at Trentham. They're all in perfect nick and the punters are having a hard job deciding which one they'd least mind losing their money on. They're on their way and quick march starts well. Yazda and Gunther are trailing him closely, Carter Keir's up there too, and Frontier Mac, Coralark, Torrent and Robbins Reward are moving up on the inside. As they go down the back, Gunther's in the lead with Coralark, Frontier Mac and Torrent close behind him. They come past the mile and three-quarter post. Helio's gone into the lead by three lengths from Robin's Reward and Torrent. 
But now Bobby Dazzler's moving up smartly to get free of the field and he's followed by Coralark with Yazda next. As they pass the mile and three, Bobby Dazzler is the leader followed by Quick March, Night Charm and Royal Tan. Renowned is further out and behind Renowned there's Langdor, King's Ransom, the Great and Carter Keir. Then there's Bruce on the outside of Beau Bijou, followed a length away by Beau Lahav, who has Barrage on the outside of him. Bobby Dazzler leads the Weddington Cup field of 1949 round the turn and out across the top. It's still anybody's race, but Bobby Dazzler's holding his lead a length and a half clear of Torrent on the outside of Robin's Reward and Gunther. Yazda's on the inside of Renowned and King's Ransom's moving up now to about sixth place. He's followed by Coralark and Lord Revel inside Carter Keir, who's improving his position slightly as they go down the back straight. Frontier Mac, the Great and Royal Tanner together. Behind them is the top weight Bruce in about twelfth place, giving the leaders six or seven lengths. As they turn into the straight for the last time, Gunther takes command and he's half a length clear of Renowned. Robin's rewards there too and so are Lord Revel, Coralark and King's Ransom. On into the straight and Bruce is flying on the outside but Coralark's on the inner and Royal Tan's coming through from the middle of the field. Gunther drops back and now it's a struggle between Royal Tan, Lord Rebel, Coralark and Bruce. The Great is coming on the outside but Royal Tan is holding on and Royal Tan will win the Wellington Cup and is followed home by the Great Bruce and Coralark. The winner Royal Tan is a gelding owned by Mr. G. Lang and his success is a minor sensation. However, the time is a good one. After the race, Mr. Lang receives a gold trophy from the Governor General. He also gets 3,900 pounds. Jockey K. Nuttall gets a gold tie pin. <laughs>